is rapping. Over keen. Dragons are not over keen. I'll dice them like a knife, slicing right through an aubergine. My dragon shelf flow is sweeter than a soda stream. You won't believe your eyes. I'm like an overload of dopamine. A broadsword in one hand and a magic spell in the other. I'm the last of the dragonborn. There's no other. My brother's a run for cover. If you've got scales, then I'm on your tail. Welcome to the 38th edition of the Skyrim Attic Podcast Roundtable. It's the ninth episode of Season 6. We are the show who compares and contrasts Skyrim experiences through a lively roundtable discussion by playing through the same quest with characters who have been randomly assigned drastically different attributes. Welcome, everyone! Welcome, welcome. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrew uh, from Indiana. This evening, I'm joined by Michael and Colin. Hello, Michael. How are you? Good, good. How you doing? Uh, wonderful. And Colin, sir. Hello. Hi, evening, guys. I'm very well. Thank you. Great. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, I'm playing a character who's an, uh, an Argonian. I think I'm in the mid-30s level-wise, somewhere around in there. Uh, last week, we discussed about uh, Alduin's Wall. We we took Delphine and Esbern over to um, Karthspire. Is that right? And uh, found the, the Alduin's Wall there. And uh, Delphine has sent us off to speak with the Greybeards, uh, concerning a um, a method that we need to obtain to uh, get rid of dragons. So um, let's get into it a little bit here, guys. Uh, Colin, would you like to just uh, briefly mention, um, just say hello, tell us a little bit about yourself, character. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. My name's Colin. I'm calling in from Essex in England. Uh, my character's name is Legit Clesia Iridia. Uh, she's an imperial female. Um, you will remember her as she. I have based her on the imperial captain that you see when you first enter Helgen that sends you to the block. Mm. And my character is based on her, where she is has escaped and survived instead of, and then carried on, uh, and eventually becomes a dragonborn. Uh, her assigned attributes were <laughs> two-handed, that. enchanting, and pickpocket. Two-handed and enchanting is a, a hundred, um, but pickpocketing is around about the, I think it's the late fifties, early sixties, maybe, um, because she only uses it for um, disarming. It will tries to use it for disarming, but you need level seventy in pickpocket to be able to get to um, pickpocket equipped oh, yeah. weapons. So, uh, do you like doing the two hand and magic? together i always thought that was sort of annoying to try to play uh both a mage who also uses a two-handed weapon having to switch back and forth i mean i know there's the quick switch stuff but it's still it's more annoying because i'm playing this on the xbox because you only have two favorites you can work it so you can have four the way you go through the favorites but basically you only have two um but on the PC, you have eight uh, hotkeys that you can put stuff on, including potions, spells, weapons, even pieces of armor. You can hotkey those and Ooh, sort of, like, you know, whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, take your helmet on and off, that sort of stuff. So, sort of like when you walk into a Jarl's house, you can take your helmet off. Um, I like to, when I am in a fight, I do not like going into my, stopping going into my inventory, clicking on something and then coming back out again. I like to just use all the hotkeys and do the spells and the potions from there without having to pause the game in the middle of the fight. Yeah. Uh, with the Xbox, it's kind of impossible. You, you have to go in, uh, at least into the favorites menu, if not yeah. going actually into the inventory. Uh, it's a bit annoying. breaks up the fight that way. Yeah. It does. It does. And uh, we'll say hello to Michael as well. Hello, Michael. How are hello, you, sir? Hello, hello, hello. I'm uh, joining you from Lakeside Manor. Um, I finally <laughs> made... They finally installed internet there. Yeah, right. I, f- I finally made it over there. It's been a long journey since last episode. Um, <laughs> my character is a Mosquir, a Khajiit, a uh, Warlock, 321, Stamina, Magicka Health. Uh, I think Light Armor, Smithing, and Alteration were my things. Pretty close to 100 on all of them, except for Alteration of like 80. So... 
Uh, but I'm rolling around with Talvis. He was not supposed to be my follower, but I picked him up in Solstheim, and I have that that mage all decked out in a Daedric armor <laughs> 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 with a Daedric battle axe. So I'm using him appropriately, and <laughs> because <laughs> yes, well, because yeah, exactly. Because. It, it looks really good. Uh, so... Yes, because Daedric armor. <laughs> yeah. So we're rolling around the countryside in that, and uh, we're we're on our way. Uh, actually, we're gonna head back all the way up north again, uh, mm. because we have to go kill a farmer, take his blood, and finish off the transmundane quest. Oh, you still need a farmer. That's it. Yeah, that's the only one I need, though. But uh, that's easy enough. They're farmer yeah. are like uh, candy that you'll find them laying on the road somewhere. Yeah, there's <laughs> there and they're locations are usually easy to identify by their yeah, names yeah. yeah so it's like dark something yeah hell. <laughs> like, <laughs> pretty much yeah like yeah yeah that's this it this is going to suck cave <laughs> yeah <laughs> i hope you brought clean underwear <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. okay yes oh uh, um so actually uh, getting into discerning the transmundane uh there is one location uh, that I need to re- try to remember to mention for that specific purpose of finding all those different bloods. Oh, yeah, stuff. there is one place. Yeah, oh, I forget yeah. where it is, though. Yeah. And I just found, like, this is the first time I've ever kind of, like, looked it up to see where I could find most of them. And I was surprised you can find uh, a lot of them, either three or four out of the five in, in one location. I was like, oh, fucking sweet. Uh, but anyway, we'll get into that. Uh, that's a little bit of a teaser for... Our quest this evening, we'll get into the Throat of the World, uh, Elder Knowledge, and Discerning the Transmundane uh, this evening. So uh, speaking of Throat of the World, uh, we're heading off that direction due to Delphine's command. Uh, but Michael and Colin, you guys were having sort of a conversation in the break there. Uh, do you remember what that was? I, I, I remember hearing just a bit as I was coming back and thought, oh, we need to throw on the mics. But now that was... You know, seven minutes ago, I don't even remember what you guys were talking about. What what was the topic you guys were talking about? We were talking about shouts, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, the emptying of the shouts. Yeah. Uh, so what you were saying, um, when you go to, uh, what's his name, on gear or whatever, uh, do all of them send you off, or is it just the on gear guy? Yeah, well, yeah, he's the only one who talks. Well, kind of. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like they all kind of talk, sort of. But um, so he will. If you go to him, he will send you off. Uh, what does he say? He says, like, I've heard a an echo of something. I forget what this actual phrase is. We've uh, heard the whispering of a word. Uh, uh, let me, give me a map and I'll show you where its echo can be found. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's I think so. very eloquent. And it'll, he'll show you, you know, he'll add a new map location. Mm-hmm. And you just go off to the. But Colin, you're saying you ran out. Yeah, I ran them out. Uh, it's not all the words because I'm still missing some. I think it's the ones that are a quest fucked. So um, she, she's she got nearly all of them. Uh, so Storm Call, we can get it's coming up. Um, next episode of the episode after, I think. And was it... Uh, there's one, for some reason, he wouldn't give me the one at Dead Crone Rock. But I think that's because it's part of the... Um, the Daedric quest uh, for Mayroon's razor. Ooh, yeah. Oh, okay. It's the, it's the big ruins out by to the just uh, south of Markarth. Yeah, those big ones with all the Force One there. Um, so he didn't give me that one. Uh, I'm also waiting on the last word for Drain Vitality, and I'm th- I think isn't Drain Vitality, um, a Dawn Guard shout? I isn't believe the one so. That yeah. Pretty sure it is. I think it's the one that you get where you go in to get Serana out. You find one there, no. and then you find one somewhere else. And then it's the uh, the last one is when you go to the Vale. Yep. And then um, what's the one? Uh, the one I won't be able to get is uh, the one in the Thieves Guild. What's the place that you go with Mercer Frey? Snowvale. Yes, Snowvale Sanctum. So I can't get in there because I won't be doing the Thieves Guild quest line. So that one I will not be able to get, which is a pain. That's too bad. 
Yeah, so no, I went to Arngear the other week and uh, said, oh, do you know any shouts? And he says, no, nope, sorry, we haven't heard any <laughs> rumblings at all. My useless tool. <laughs> oh, we've gone, gone quiet. Yes, yeah, it was actually something along those lines. So, sort of like, you know, do you, you know, we haven't heard a trembling or trembling has quietened down. Something eloquent again. The I still am not exactly sure how it works, but the last time I was up there visiting with those nice fellas, I started learning um, how to meditate on my shouts through whichever weird mod adds that. Thunderchild. Thunderchild, yes. And it also that's the one that also adds the shrines. It adds new smaller shrines all over the map where uh, you can... I, I still am figuring all this out. I like I'm halfway through this playthrough on this character already, and I'm still. I, I know I could look it up, but I'm still. You know how I like to try to figure it out before going to the internet and looking. Like, oh, okay, this is what it does. I might have to yeah. go. I might have to go look it up to see what it actually does at this point. But uh, yeah, I did. I, know. I, I, I hate did doing that as well. Out. I did finally figure out how to meditate. And have you have you used that? I assume before Colin with the meditation uh, and the. I've I've never used the mod before. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, it's 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 been really interesting, but I still need to look up a lot of stuff. I, I feel like I'm missing a lot of uh, extra shouts. There's like there's some really cool new ones that it's added, like earthquake and stuff like that. You can uh, have like, you know, I, I mean, self-explanatory, of course. And Armageddon's fun. Like it, I think it's basically the same thing that Alduin does. It brings nice. the, the the fire and brimstone or from the sky. No, but the there's all sorts of stuff. But, but they add a little extra room and up by the in the graybeard quarters, and you can go and you kneel and based on it, it shows you a few seconds of your stamina bar ticking down, and then it dis- makes it disappear. And it says, "Okay, now you have to hit the button when you think there's twenty percent of your stamina bar." left and that's how you meditate on this and if you successfully do that enough times you get a uh, an extra perk in this word you meditate on the first series of words and the second thing and it makes different levels of each word too it's a uh, pretty involved but uh i need to research it more i need to uh get on victor a little bit and say uh, hey teach me about this Let's see what it says uh but so we're up uh going to the gray beards um for the quest throat of the world uh did anything interesting happen on your way from uh um karth spire or alduin's wall colin on your way to the Greybeards? i know you like to hoof it you never fast travel or anything yeah no I, I hoofed it but um i didn't do anything else um basically went straight there i was going to get these done because at the at the ending of the next quest uh you get some free time so you don't read really it doesn't point you directly to go right back after it, so uh, I don't know all my supplementary questing afterwards. So mm-hmm. I pretty much went from uh, Karth Spire, uh, and then sort of like I think maybe I either went to Markarth, got a carriage to uh, Riften, or I think I might have gone to one of my houses and took the carriage from there because that can bring me directly to Iverstead. Is Iverstead a destination for carriages? Uh, for the ones that are yeah. your house, yes. For the hearth fire ones, yeah. Oh, that's nice. So I don't use carriages very much. The the ones from cities only go to other cities then? Yep. Only, yeah, only go to the capitals. The main, yeah. Wow. Um, I'm trying to think. what, And carriages generally only exist at the cities and at the three hearth fire houses, right? Are there any other carriage posts that are in smaller towns? No, Mm-mm. not unless you mod it. Okay. Um, I did add one town. What is that one that's just south of our Ironbind Barrow? That sort of just like a crossroads in Nightingale Inn or something. Now you flush it out to a little town. That's pretty fun, little mod. Oh yeah, Nightingale. Yeah, that's right there. Yeah. But uh, evidently, there's lots of uh, mods like that to to beef out your little town, crossroad towns into actually little little active economies and stuff like that so that's always fun uh sorry i got us off track again there um so we're going to throat of the world where we need to go up to speak with the gray beards in order to learn a method in order to deal with the new wave of dragons right is that what we're doing 
Um, All right, what I'm looking for is shout either specific to dragons or specific to Alduin. We actually know that it is a shout. From the message on the wall, we learned that it was a the shout from the what the warriors of old, what were those guys called? Uh, the tongues, the ancient tongues. The ancient tongues. There's three old uh, Nord heroes. Mm-hmm. So um, because of that, we're going to go to the Greybeards and see if they know anything about this shout. Michael, uh, was Arngir very helpful to you? It depends on how you approach them. Um, <laughs> what I did was uh, this time, uh, he wanted me to follow the way of the voice and all that stuff. And I was a little more rude to him. I was just like, uh, just tell me. Like, no, just tell me. And eventually it's, uh, what's the other gray beard? Begins with an E. Um, Aranthea or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has a, you hear, you know, when you're walking into White Run after you kill that first dragon, the echoing, the rumble and the echoing. Uh, he basically does that and says uh, Parthenax or something. He says something, something, something Parthenax. Yeah. And uh, you can do, and then Iron Gear is like, oh, oh, forgive me. I was I was not humble enough or something. Uh, and then he, you know, you go into the whole thing where he teaches you the shouts out in the courtyard, uh, clear skies. So there's a couple different, you can be, you know, deferential to him, or you can be a jackass and you can still get out there and get the shots. Yeah, you don't have to do. You don't have to be cooperative. You you can just be a jerk and he'll still teach you. Yep, pretty much. Yeah, come on, Angier. Uh So tell me about the learning process. Uh, what? Where are these words popping up? Like uh, they're out by the fire, and they're kind of like just sort of emblazoned into the ground, right? If you walk past them. Yeah, they're um, right by the archway. That you walk over to the archway um, to head up to uh, Throat of the World, and they're pretty much right there. Hey, all of you guys who are uh, grinders, uh, just want to level your stuff up with like restoration. There's perfect loop right there. Throw on your healing. Run into that wind loop over and over again. Yeah, you can just keep into bashing that. into that. Yeah, keep running into that over and over again. That's a uh, it's faster than the fire trap if you stand in the fire trap because the wind, I think, does a little more damage. Yeah, that's uh, pretty significant damage. So that's fun, and you can if you throw on your light armor. There you go, gives you a little bit of the. Uh, it'll, it'll perk up your light armor too, guys. Come on, let's get in with the cheat grinds. <laughs> okay, so you there? He's teaching you. Um. Sorry, what was the shout? He was teaching you clear to... skies. Clear skies. He gives you all three parts. Dra- of it. I was going to say dragon rend. I was like, we're not quite there yet. Not quite. Getting there. Although I have uh, what's the other one? Not dragon rend. Um, the one from bend will. Bend will. Yeah, which is pretty good too. But that was, is that the one from the dragon uh, horn? Yeah, where you can ride the dragon, which is horrifically bad. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's not discuss it. Man, I forgot how bad it was until I did it recently. Because I never do it because, you know, we remember how bad it is. And then I had to do it, obviously, to battle Mirak. And I'm like, I, I can't even get anywhere I'm trying to go. Yeah. <laughs> and then I tried to fly a dragon back to, uh, I was like, oh, you know what? I'm, since I'm walking everywhere, you know, what? I'll, f- I'll fly a dragon back to uh, yeah. Lakeview Manor. Yeah. Yeah. And I then I, I could that. I could not remember how to land. I <laughs> I just, I hate it so much. Did they actually let you traverse the map? Like, could you go a long distance on it? And in my experience, they would go up and circle a few times and I wouldn't figure out how to go any particular direction and they would just sort of I land. I think you can like, it's like a fast travel basically. Okay. But I figured that was similar to taking a carriage. I mean, I'm on a dragon. It's not like, uh, you know. I thought it might be like taking a a, a Verta bird in, in Fallout Four or something. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't know. I've never actually flown in one. Oh, because I always kill them, so I've yeah. never actually yeah, flown yeah. in one. They're fun to shoot down. <laughs> well, they just kind of crash out of the sky randomly. Uh, a lot of them do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I thought. I don't know why. I just think it's always weird absorbing the the words off the floor. Does he shout them into the floor or anything? Yeah, they kind of do like mm-hmm. a shout to the floor, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. And then you absorb it off of the off the floor. Mm-hmm. The three words, do they have anything of significance to them? Mm-hmm. You learn all three of them at once. It's it's not like you have to go through any process to learn the three steps. I always thought that was weird when they just give you everything. Yeah, there's only a few that do that. Um there's that one. Uh the throw voice, I think, gives you all three, right? Yeah, you still have to play Dragon Soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get all three words at the same time. Yeah, there's a few that. that Can you get Ro and Da at the same time? Can you get the no. the last two words? No, I don't think so. Right? No, no, no. no you you find you get Ro and then, um, sorry, you get Foos. My mistake. Sorry, you get Foos at uh, what's it? Who's it? And then you go up. Then they give you row, and then they send you to Oost and Grav, and when you come back from Oost and Grav, then you get that. And they can do it. Okay. Okay, so uh, where are we going here with the Throat of the World? Uh, the Throat of the World refers to the 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 peak, tippy top of um, the Greybeard's Mountain there. Correct. So um, they have taught us clear skies, and you could probably explain this better than I. The As far as I can tell, it it'll... It'll clear weather patterns, any wind and fog, stuff like that. Um, I had not used it until Colin uh, informed us that it'll also bring a dragon down out of the sky. Is that correct? No, it'll interrupt them. It'll interrupt them, meaning like he he won't shout? Yeah, so if he's up and he's hovering in the air and he's about to shout, if you use clear skies on him, um, then it'll sort of like you're using Fusro Darnum and it'll sort of like stun him in the midair so oh. he'll then fly off and then come back down. It doesn't knock him out of the air, it just sort of like stuns him. But it did, it, well, it did until the unofficial patch. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah, the unofficial patch is patched it out. Oh no, so it doesn't do anything to him then? No. That sucks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, artificial patch doesn't patch the problem of where um, was it the the voice of the sky affects vampires, but he patched out the thing where it says uh, uh, clear skies won't stun people. I mean, uh, all right, it's slightly OP because it's got a five second recycle if you use just the first word. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, that is a quick yeah, and it'll stun somebody. It'll sort of like stagger them for a second. It's really handy when you're using a warhammer. Oh god, that would be. Um, so we're making up our our way up the hill. We've learned our three words. Uh, do we have to do anything else before starting just to clear the smoke and start going up? Does do we need any more messages? Do we have any other conversations we need to have before going out and seeking the uh, advice of the leader? Yeah, well, Angier does say to you, "This is uh, your last gift from us, Dragonborn. Mm-hmm. Make good use of it." And that's it from then on. Uh, for the rest of the game, you don't have to mess with them, unless you do no, some more stuff, right? Yeah, unless you go back up and sort of like ask them to find you more words. Yeah. Hey, um, this is something I've never actually seen a uh, payout. What is what? Clemic supplies I've taken up there. Yeah. But Clemic always like disappears or something. What happens with Clemic's supplies? Does he just? Did you just earn like? 80 gold or something. 1,500 gold. Yeah, it's... A... 1,500? Holy shit, I need to go fight Clevic. Where is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta go. You gotta get paid for that quest. <laughs> That's a lot of gold. That's a long way up. Wow. Yeah. We... I didn't know it was that much. I... That's something I've always done, but I've never actually uh, sought to pay it, sought the payoff. Gee whiz. I think I it's even... leveled. I think it probably... But it starts off at like 400 gold. And then when you get time, I think when you get into the thirties, it goes up to like fifteen hundred gold, twelve hundred or fifteen hundred gold. The other, I know it was over a thousand. Uh, I'm writing down. Find that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he owes you. Get my gold. Get paid. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is. Argier really says this is our, our last gift to you. So, uh, does he say anything about blades? Does the blades come up when you're speaking with him at all? What uh, when you talk yeah. to him to be, before you go outside? Yeah, yeah. What does he say? 
Well, when he's asking how you know about it or something, and Dragon like, Rand, yeah, yeah, you, you you can say, "Well, I'm not going to mention that." And then he's like, he puts two and two together, and he goes, "The blades." Oh yeah, they um, they um, uh, they specialize in meddling in affairs they uh, they don't understand, mm. something like that. So basically, the blades like to poke around in everything that they come across, like. They're the ones who walked over and sort of like poked the Thalmor, and that's what sparked the war. And they're the ones who poked at the dragons, and they, they like to go around and jab their big long swords into everything. Uh-huh. And then the greybeards are the complete opposite who just sit on a mountain and do absolutely nothing. <laughs> that's true. That's so true. they're like the two polar opposites. Uh... They don't go poking. No. I thought that I remember. Aren't gear saying something like, I don't know why I want you to, I don't know why you want to know this word dragonborn. Mm-hmm. This word has existed in the past. And yes, it has brought down Alduin again, but he is back. So it obviously didn't work. Are you actually meant to know this and use this word? Does he say something about that? He says two things. He says that, um, we, he can't teach you the word because he doesn't know it and he goes and even if he did know it he wouldn't teach it to you because that word is evil and if to know a word you take it into yourself so you would to find to learn dragon rent you will be taking evil into yourself to use it oh wow and then he's all because he was saying that it, the word was created by the tongues because they were living under the heel of Alduin and during the dragon cult and under their unimaginable cruelty. So it was born from their pure hatred of dragons, and that's where it comes from. And then, what else did he say? Some other part to it. Uh, yeah, he was saying that they tried to defeat Alduin before, and it didn't work. He's come back. So do you really think that you need to beat Alduin? Um, if it's the will of the gods that this world comes to an end, we can just sit here and let it end. <laughs> they like to take action, those guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so man, this uh, it just further explains more differences between the blades. <laughs> 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 Parthenax kind of says the same, similar stuff, but not. He more asks it rather than says this is how it should be. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so actually, let's get up and start talking to Parthenax. Um, in order to get to Parthenax, though, we have to use our new clear skies uh, shout to get through the mist. Um, anything interesting on the travel up there? I know there's a goat. Is there a, a couple a, goats? No troll or something? I don't uh, even remember frost troll. The frost, frost troll. Ice race. A couple of. Uh, Ice rates, right? Ice rates. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's a little bridge that if you're not careful, you can fall off the bridge. Yes, yes. Uh, Did you fall off the bridge, Andrew? I've, I have <laughs> definitely <laughs> fallen off the bridges before. Uh, but, guys, you know what I never thought to do before that I am doing now is when I get into places like that, I, I just put my become ethereal shout in my favorites menu. Oh, yeah. When I ever start falling and shit, I quickly bring up my men like they let you become ethereal like really quickly like if their fall is long enough and stuff like that like i've busted myself out of numerous occasions like i cannot believe i've never thought of become ethereal like if i'm you know doing that stupid skyrim climbing mountain stuff where you climb 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 oh whoop shit i slipped and fell and died <laughs> you know like I've, I've saved myself quite a few times already in this guy with become ethereal i was like god i can't believe i've never used that no, I don't before. think I've ever used that shout. It, it's, it's, I, don't, I, I usually use it all the time. Yeah. It's good, I've, I've, it's recently. Good when you haven't got any followers, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> if you have 30 followers, shit, it's still fun. I still use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Why can't you guys keep up with me? I mean, it's only a thousand pounds. Full, like thousand foot drop from the top of this mountain, <laughs> and then I sprinted across this, hid behind two mammoths. Why aren't you here? Does the become ethereal shout work with the bard's leap thing? I've never even thought to use it there either. That seems I'm sure so, it would. Yeah, so obvious. Yeah. Right? 
so obvious. Why would or you, you not? could just jump into the water and you'll be fine. But there's that. I've missed before, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> You guys ever died with that jump? I don't think I've ever missed. (laughs) I think I got to the end and then tried to jump off so I could get like lift oh, it further, it. yeah. But there's like an overhang just there. (laughs) (laughs) She jumped, bashed her head against the top of that. You ragged all all the way down. Uh, You clumped on the side, like where went through the actual waterfall and then clumped on the rocks behind. Um, Rather spectacularly. Probably didn't save either, so I had to kill all the Force Horn again. Oh, oh God. Isn't that the worst when you forget oh. to save? <laughs> oh. You hate clearing out an area <laughs> and then falling off the ledge and die. Oh, that's such a me move. Such a me move. Um, so we're making our way up the mountain uh, using clear skies. Uh, there's both wind, I believe, and sort of like a foggy mist. Uh, you have to clear that out occasionally. How quick is that cycle time on the, uh, on the shot? And can you just see. do like the first word? Is that good enough? Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. I always do because I use the very first word. Five seconds five really second. cycles really quickly. <laughs> so she just trots along and then it goes bang, bang, bang. Um, if you use the full shout, it so clears 14. it for longer. But you got to be shouting at it. Yeah, and seeing as there's loads of corners and stuff like that, so. But was it the recycle time on the full show? It's only fifteen seconds. Yeah, four, oh, fourteen seconds. Yeah. Oh, geez, how dare you, Colin? Yeah. Well, no, I only I just looked it up. That's the only reason I knew. <laughs> I just pulled it up real quick just to see. He's probably got the blessing of Talos going on. Oh, yeah. I do. Oh, I do. He's got the the amulet on. He saves himself a whole ten percent <laughs> recharge. I time. have the amulet. Yes, I do. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Five, nine, and fourteen. You called out your your tally, your Talos amulet. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, I must have a sickness. Oh, I have rock joint. God, God. Oh man, I need a potion or something. Yeah, I got a cure disease. I have a bag full of seventy five thousand potions, so I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. Santa Claus style sack of potions. Uh, That's one thing I'm not missing on the, in this playthrough at all. She's done the only. Um, alchemy she does is um invisibility potions Ooh, oh that's, that's good. it she yeah, makes that's no it. other potions because she uses them when she's trying to go in to disarm like uh bandits and stuff so she sneaks up them now let's see that would be like um let me see hey, well i'm doing fire lots of dawn guard stuff so loads of vampire dust fire dust glow Charis eggs Charis eggs yeah okay Charis eggs yeah, she's got like eight inv- invisibility potions on her. <laughs> nice. She can go <laughs> undetected forever. Yeah. So we're, she should take a few invisibility potions here as we make up the way up the mountain and we go speak to Parther next. But before I went to speak to Parther next, I went all the way up to the tippy top. I don't know if we have any new listeners who are haven't heard this word of advice yet, but... Um, there you see Parthernax, uh, but opposite of that wall behind you is yet another peak. If you kind of work your way up and around that peak and do your weird Skyrim jumping up. There's a, a yeah, the technical f- term is billy goating. Billy goating. If you billy goat up the uh, the mountain there, you'll find a few more ore veins. I believe even an ebony ore vein mm-hmm. um, and a special pickaxe up there called the notched pickaxe. I believe uh, Victor made reference to it last episode. Uh, yes, notch, Michael, do, yeah. you, do you know anything about that notched pickaxe? Well, it's a an ode to Minecraft. Meaning, uh, is the is uh, the person's name was Notch, right? Who created oh. Minecraft? Yeah. Okay, so that, I mine. did not know that. That's yeah. cool. Uh, the person who created Minecraft was named Notch. I believe that's, that's where fun. it comes from. Yeah. Uh, and what is it's it's actually enchanted or something? Uh, yeah, I forget what it has on it, but yeah, it is enchanted. What is it? Is it something with smithing or something? It's, yeah, it's it increases a... your smithing by, I think it's five percent or fifteen percent. And also does shock damage, I think. Oh, wow. I didn't know about the shock damage part. I, I think it's one of those things that you can, like, put that enchantment on another item, maybe like a dagger, and just have that in your inventory, and that will increase your your smithing, just having it in your pocket or I whatever. Think, yeah, I think mm-hmm. that's one of those ones if you just have, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, the the pickaxe itself. Oh, I guess you could just use it as your pickaxe. I didn't even think about that. But yep. if you want to use a like a wait, what is the the Stalrim pickaxe? You whatever need the that ancient one's called. Nordic. Yeah. 
ancient Nordic pickaxe. Yeah, if you want to use that, you know, that would be a, a problem. But actually, just put that enchantment on the ancient Nordic pickaxe and solve everyone's problems. Exactly. There you go. Uh, perfect pickaxe. There you go. Uh, so up there, you get the notch pickaxe, a couple extra ore veins. Anything else up there? Mm, is there a chest up there? I don't know if there's a chest yeah. or not. No. Yeah, it's okay. just the so, character, uh, yeah. Make your way back down and uh, speak to uh, Parthernex. What, is, what does Parthernex have for you to say to you, Michael? Uh, he's he basically uh, wants... Well, first he talks to you a little bit and then gives you a shout, a fire shout, to talk to him so you can speak in the doom. Because that. that's important to him. He wants to speak in the dragon tongue. So you have to shout fire at him. Uh, then basically he kind of goes over a similar thing that Angir did, but much more politely and nicely. Uh, and it's like, well, what if uh, you know? What if the world was supposed to end and there's another world supposed to be born? And, he's, and you're like, well, that world can take care of itself. <laughs> I need to get to Sovngarde. Uh, <laughs> this world. <laughs> yeah. And then eventually he uh, lets you know that you can talk to either you need a uh elder scroll and you can eat you know it's optional whether you can talk to angir or esburn or if you know where it is because you've played ten thousand times you can just go there and get it <laughs> which is what i did i didn't talk to either of them because uh i'm not fast traveling so i would have talked to esburn uh yeah. so, but um that Esburn's was... all the way back on Man, the Man, he's Western. a long way away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on the western end of the map. Yeah, so that trek wasn't happening. So uh, I was like, I'm just going to head north to our friend out on the ice. <laughs> so um, you can speak to Parthenex a little bit more. Um, and he tells you about um, uh, was it the ancient tongues? He's the one who tells you about the ancient Nords and oh yes, um, yeah. There's a whole uh, yeah. Tells you about uh, Hakon Feldir and damn, I forgot her name. Gormleif. Uh, three you... Nord heroes, and he said, um, "What did he say?" He said, "The there have been many Nord, a uh, great Nord heroes, but none greater than those three, or something similar to that effect. Yeah, you know, he's saying that they're the greatest heroes in Nord history, and, and they are the three who created the Dragon Rend Shout of Evil. Yes. Okay. Um, there. Um, he says that you need the Kel, the the Elder Scroll, because. Mm. Um, they used that Elder Scroll to send Alduin back uh, forward in time. Uh, something about because uh, was it Akatosh is the god of time and bloody 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 blah, and dragons are the like the sons or the whatever they're born from Akatosh, so they're particularly susceptible to stuff to do with time. So that's why it worked on Alduin that particular way. So, was there any downtime between when the ancient heroes uh, sent Alduin to the future and when he appeared on the... Or or they sent him and, bam, he's on that tower mm-hmm. in the intro scene where you're getting your head chopped off. Well, no, 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 he, yeah. no, he arrived earlier on because there's rumors all over Skyrim about dragons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he arrived at the same point that he left. So he arrived at uh, on the throw of the world where Parthenax has his people. Oh, where Parthenax is up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because nice. he came through the time wound, time wound, I guess. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Time wound, yeah. And if you've already had a dragon, not a dragon scroll, an elder scroll with you, if you've done Dawn Guard and stuff, does Parthenex change how he speaks about Elder Scrolls, or does he still treat you like you don't know anything? Or yeah, yeah he sure. still treats you, and you, you have the option of saying, "Oh, what is an Elder Scroll?" Even okay. though you've got one, because I had one in my pocket. You have the the blood or something. Hmm. Um. So I didn't bother asking him what an Elder Scroll was because I had one. 
what which one does um who's he what's it what's her name serena no what's serena. Her name? she has the sun scroll no she has no. she has no, blood she has... right you know no i think she has the sun one because the blood one is the one that you get from the soul girl oh okay okay so that's the one you get from serana's mother valerica yeah so that's the blood one yes she has the sun one you were right yeah, those are the three that we can encounter in the game. Blood, mm-hmm. Sun, and Dragon. Yeah, right. Blood, Sun, and Dragon. Okay, so <clears throat> we need Parthenax has told us exactly what to go to go speak to Cygnus. Cygnus? No, no he, he says um, he wouldn't know because he's been sitting on a mountain mm-hmm. for like 10,000 years. So, so Parthenax, fucking... he claims ignorance here. Yeah, he yes. had no idea where he'd be able to find that Elder Scroll, but you think, well, uh, maybe the mage is at the College of Winterhold, or the lore, you actually say the lore keeper at lore, the College oh, of Winterhold. That, that orc guy in the library, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, doesn't Arngear say something derogatory towards mages or something in this same yes. instance? Yeah. <laughs> that guy's all over this. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> fuck that guy. Uh, he's like, and he goes, that we've never concerned ourselves with, this, oh, I can't remember the term he uses, uh, blasphemous, that's it. Blas- uh, such blasphemies have always been the stock and trade of the mages of Winterhold. Ding! <laughs> he loves those guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a friendly guy. Yeah, damn fuck, he's right. Oh, I still need a dark elf. Uh, so, I actually went to Winterhold then. Yeah. Oh, oh, there is one other thing that you can do with Parthenax. You can meditate on a word with him. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, you can change it and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so there is... Tell me about that mechanic. Uh, there's, I think it's Sos... Um, F- Fus, something, and then Yol. Fus is... Uh, about balance or force and balance and stuff like that which means that you I think it's you stagger less and foos fime and y'all I don't know what fime is all about but it's from the what should we call it the uh, become ethereal shout so uh, something po- to do with something it, and it then y'all yeah is fire, which increases the strength of your fire breath shout. Nice. Um, which, which do- just taught you, right? Yes. Uh, I already had the other two words, so when he taught me his word, I had got on all three words. Then I meditated on Yol, which makes it um, 20% more stronger. So you, uh, you use that fire breath out and about in the field a lot? Yeah, I, yeah, was it, you know when he gets th- attacked by the three vampires? Uh, okay. Fire Breath Shout will uh, one-shot the vampire and a blooded vampire. Oh, There's nice. absolutely nothing to the ancient vampire or the Volkihar vampire running behind <laughs> with the giant thunderbolts. There's absolutely nothing to her, but the other two, it wipes them out. Um, That's a good way to run into battle, then. Just, boom, get those two out of the way. And then, yeah, and then the poxy... Uh, ancient um, one or the master vampire raises one of them up again <laughs> you hate that asshole <laughs> fuck that guy <laughs> Rana, hurry up and get those people raised up so the other guys don't do it first yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah truly <laughs> yeah that's annoying i hate having to kill everything again when they bring them back uh what level are they is it dependent upon the the, the conjurer or is it that dependent upon what level they were before they died yeah, it depends on the creature that they're raising. Mm-hmm. They're a little bit tougher because the health does You start wailing on the health doesn't move for a little bit. So frustrating. I hate those assholes. <laughs> okay. Um, so are we done with Parthernax at that point? He says he doesn't really have any advice after. Uh, about yeah, he just Martin. tells you to trust your instincts. So follow your, your Dova sauce. Dragon blood. Okay. Um, and then um, Arngear will give you the... He'll drop the hint of going to the 
the college mm-hmm. to degrade them on your way out the door. Uh, so you can go speak then to uh, what's his name? What's the name of the orc librarian? Bob. I forget his name. Name. Bob. Urag. 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 That's it. Yeah. Urag. That's Urag. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. Is he who you talk to, or do you speak to one of the um, the mages? I don't even remember. I think you speak to the librarian, right? Yeah, it's Urag, yeah. Yeah, it's Urag, yeah. And, um, gosh, he probably says something horrible about Septimus, I assume. <laughs> All right, so we uh, we get done with Parthenax. We go talk to Urag. Talk to Urag, Urag up at the college, and you find out about Septimus Cygnus, correct? Yeah, he says, um, do you, you ask him, like, hey, do you have his dragons, like an Elder Scroll? Mm-hmm. Goes, do you yeah. know what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, Even that's... if you're the, <laughs> the Archmage, he starts giving you garbage. And you're like, yeah, um, right, look, here, um, was it, uh, I might have some books on it. Uh, let me go. And he, he walks over to one of the bookshelves and gets two books out. And one of them is Effects of the Elder Scrolls, which tells you that sometimes reading an Elder Scroll can blind you. Yes. And uh, if not reading it properly. And then the other ones is Ruminations on the, on the Elder, Elder Scrolls, Scrolls, which was written by this guy called Septimus Cygnus. And uh, it's all over the place. It's all over the map. Um, you can't really make sense of it. It's very weird you written. So you turn around to Ureg and say to him, hey, this this book here is incomprehensible, I believe was the word you used. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're playing a Nord, that must have been particularly difficult. <laughs> um, when uh, Then he says, yes, that was the works of Septimus Cygnus. He used to be, we used to, I think he was a mage there at the college. Yeah, but then so. he got involved with the scrolls and he goes we used to be close and things like that and he goes he's out and the ice pack if you want to go out and talk to them yep so then you wander out to just north of the college uh actually just south of the chill if you've never been to the chill that's a fun place um <laughs> the chill is uh what the prison for winter hold right right uh oh uh oh I've never actually been up there. Am I still echoey bad? Yeah. Yeah. Our audio is Our coming audio right is back. back. <laughs> yeah, so the chill is just north of Septimus Cygnus. Um, and I believe that's... Is that the prison for Winterhold? Am I correct on that? Oh, and then Colin's muted too. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, mate. I, I, <laughs> I, I, re- I muted myself and then forgot to unmute myself because uh, i was coughing up a lung <laughs> um yes it is it's the uh the prison for winter hold okay yeah uh, no bars or anything like that i don't think i've actually never been there oh really the first time i yeah the first time i ever heard about it was from uh victor it's fun one of the, um the shows. <laughs> it seems like it's a really calm little thing you go in there you're like hey what's going on and there's a little surprise when you come out so i'm not gonna tell you but uh i suggest visiting <laughs> <laughs> I suggest visiting and uh yeah. <laughs> Pack a lunch, you know, yeah, maybe a bit of a Yeah. Yeah, there's there's no prisoners alive in there, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh it's pretty cold. You're pretty far north, uh out in the middle of the ice. Uh let's see. It is di- I think it's directly north. Uh, it's directly northeast of Septimus Cygnus outpost. So if you go northeast and directly north of the College of Winterhold, further out than Septimus Cygnus. Mm-hmm. So if you, you plan on going there um, to visit anybody who's been put in jail, um, yeah, they're not there. There is a Frost Atronach inside, and he does not attack you, actually. Oh, uh, nice. Because he's the guard, I assume, is why. Because um, I was kind of surprised. I went inside, and I'm like, oh, God, I don't have to fight the Atronach. But uh, it actually doesn't attack you because I... I guess because it's technically the prison guard for the area Weird. so, there so he doesn't that. try to stop you from escaping then uh well i wasn't in jail i just went in to visit uh, right yeah um yeah that Talvis getting in trouble again yeah he was you know 
<laughs> He's always up to something. Uh, yeah, we had some fun when we left. Though. I'll just say you, you want to go there and then you want to leave. That's that's kind of what you want to do. But uh, <laughs> beyond that, yeah, you get to Septimus Cygnus. Um, he, of course, is, has a can, has a boat outside of his building. Um, you can head into some little triangular door like you're in Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory and head into his building and he's down in some frozen icy cave talking to himself uh, and he wants to open some Dwemer uh, it's like a giant sphere right essentially I thought it was a cube is it a giant cube well he gives you a cube cu- but the thing he's opening is it a cube or is it like a giant sphere no, 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 I'm pretty sure it's a cube. Is it? Or is it some sort of box or something? Yeah, like maybe that's what, yeah. yeah. He calls it like a box. It's kind of like something. an artist thing because I think it's bigger on the inside as it well. It definitely is. <laughs> well, I haven't opened it yet technically with this playthrough. But uh, yeah, and then uh, so he gives you a sphere, a Dwemer sphere and a Dwemer cube, a lexicon, I should say, mm-hmm. um, that you have to take with you to Blackreach. And how so you need the um, sphere to be able to open that opens the, the uh, stairwell essentially. <laughs> the there's like a table um, and like a seal, and you use the sphere and it opens it up. Um, I enjoy that run through uh, to get to Blackreach. That's a good good test when you head down there the first time. Uh, through what is that? What's that called? Alftan. Alftan. That's it. I couldn't remember. I'm right there too, and I couldn't remember the name of it. I'm literally on top of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So Alftan's pretty good. Um, it's a good little it's a long ass dungeon. That one. It is long. There is kind of a story though as you're going through that it's kind of ancillary. Um, it's not really part of the quest uh, with those thieves and all that are going mm-hmm. through there, and you can kind of follow along with that. That's pretty fun too. Adds a little to it. Which is yeah, coming up across uh, journals and stuff. Yeah, sort of like, you know. yeah, and then you get to that end part where the gate is closed, and there, is, after a quite a long way through the ruins, there, uh, you get to the end part. There's a gate closed, and there's a centurion uh, after you beat some Falmer and stuff. So you take him out, and then you head through some other gates, and there's two people talking, <laughs> and you're like, "How the <laughs> hell did you get in here? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you in here? How did this happen?" <laughs> Yeah, how did they get out? I mean, at one point they were actually taken prisoner by the farmer. Yeah, I don't know how. I I don't know. And and then they escaped. Some guy done a bloody what should we call it? A distraction or something. Some went the uh, one way, and then these guys. This sol- yeah, that was it. The the sol- the imperial guy wanted to go further in to find the treasure, while everybody else just wanted to get out. But That's so, what it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, I'm uh, like. Sh- Umana, the, the Umana woman. and Stello or something like that, or Stella. Sella. Sella, yeah. Uh, he was the Imperial, and I, I believe yes. she was his bodyguard. Yeah, uh, so they're and they're arguing, and then start fighting and killing each other, um, <laughs> which is always nice uh, when you're with friends killing each other. Uh, you can wait until one of them kills the other. Usually the woman. Yes. Or you could just Usually kill both of them. Yeah, I'll kill both. Fireball. Yeah. She's got an awesome shield on her. Yeah, the Targe of the Blooded she has, which is the, what, you get three plus three bashing with the shield. Plus no, three points. Plus three points of bleed. Bleeding damage. damage, that's what it is, yeah. It's not very good. It doesn't do that much damage, but it looks cool, and it's got an awesome name. It does, and you cannot disenchant that, though. That no. only stays on that. So there is that. That that's the only issue. Uh, oh shit! I realized I just need. I forgot. I need to find a dark elf. Um, I'm heading out to Septimus Cygnus, and I don't even have a dark elf yet. Blood yet. But that's the second part of the quest. So after you talk to him, you go through there. You, you do the. You come to the. What is that called? Is that the Anamano Clary or something like that? Um, where the giant sphere is after you go down the steps. Yeah, Anamonclary. With the mirrors and light shining through. Uh, now, how I do it, I think we've talked about this before. The buttons light up. The button just to the right of the center console, tap it, wait, 
tap it, wait, tap it, wait, and but look to your left. As soon as the one on the left of the center console lights up, don't tap it anymore. Then yeah, tap tap that it. one until the left of that one lights up. <laughs> and don't tap it anymore. <laughs> and that that way is much easier than trying to figure out how many times you have to tap each one. And eventually you yeah, do. That's pretty much how I do. I usually what I do is uh tap the one the furthest one on the right twice and then the one next to it uh, just to the left of it tap that three or four times that's when the button on the left side Open. of the console yeah comes on you press that one and then wait until the one on the furthest left and then that's what opens it yep um are the horrible echoes back guys no no no, no it's all good no. you're all good and it's still live so look at that awesome hey, i um I used to have to go crazy on that whole puzzle until I heard Michael talk about on one of his playthroughs is you just punch each button until the next one turns blue to the left and you just keep punching the buttons until the next one turns. I'm just like, oh, God, I didn't even know it was that simple. It seems, yeah, if you get if you start hitting them, it gets a little complicated, you know, without paying attention. But uh, yeah, yeah, if you it just reset, it, they'll reset. Yeah. yeah, once they reset, just start and from the right to the left. That's all the best way to do it and don't forget to take the lexicon after it's transcribed i've done that before and then I'm you glad have... they provide an easy back entrance yes you know what I mean? yeah because that would be horrible to have to go all the way through that again but i have totally forgotten it who who was it that oh somebody once said that they was it blake went through it not only did they leave the cube they left the Elder Scroll. Oh, yes. Yeah. Somebody did that. I do remember that. Yes, yes, yes. I'm pretty sure it was Blake. So I like, went all the way back and then didn't have the bloody scroll with them. That's hilarious. Oh. It's like, Earth is still just staring at you for suffering. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck's going on? Oh, I'm going to bug. Oh, wait. No, I I love those things when people are like, oh, I've got a bug. This stupid quest is bugged. I hate this stupid quest. Uh, did you pick up the fucking lexicon? No, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> that sounds like, that, Colin, that honestly could have been me for all I know. I don't know. I could have forgotten the fucking scroll there before. No, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I, I, I remember hearing it from somebody. <laughs> I, I, for some reason, I'm I'm blaming it on Blake. <laughs> That's, Blake, take the blame for that one. Yes. Take the blame. With like, uh, with discerning the transmundane with my character, Ecclesia is not doing it. She was like, she's not giving that crazy lunatic anything that he might hurt himself with. Sorry, where were we? We're talking about uh, your your character was not going to do discerning the transmundane. Yes, because uh, yeah, crazy lunatic in uh, in an iceberg. Yeah, fuck that guy, not bringing that, him something that he's going to hurt himself and probably everybody else on Nern with. So she's just going to carry around the box and make sure he doesn't get it. Okay, so what does what is in that box at this point? What did uh, we do? It's the, the machine that was in Elftand was built by the dwarves because... They were so super intelligent that they knew trying to read the scroll physically was dangerous. Yeah. So they built a machine that could read the scroll and write it in a safe way onto one of those Duomo boxes so they could get all the knowledge from the scroll without risking themselves. Okay, and they take the... Is, it, is the box called the lexicon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the box and is the They lexicon. can take that lexicon and drop it into sort of like a projector and see... And have it read or something? For all I know, a little Jack in the Box comes out of it and starts reading <laughs> off the stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a little scroll. I haven't got a clue. Um, but Septimus seems to be able to figure it out. So, yeah, maybe it's written on all the lights on the end on the outside of the box because it's pretty dead when you have it. When you but when you put it in the uh, in the machine, it all lights up. Oh, they're, they're like it opens up. Did you ever look at it when it was on the machine? It starts like glowing blue or something, right? Yeah, 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 it opens up and sort of like spreads out, and there's all lights coming out of it and spinning. Looks really cool. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> all 
That's awesome. So we're uh, it's full of basically just the the knowledge of the scroll. Then at that point, in some form, uh, where Septimus could get it off of there, so he could figure out what the scroll said. That's why he yeah. sent you. Mm-hmm. So he could use that knowledge to be able to get into the Dwemer box. Yeah, that's out at his ice pack. And did you guys open that up already? You already talked about all that. No, we didn't talk about that yeah. yet. Did you pop it open for for Septimus? Did he? Did you let him into his? We can't until you do the. Uh, you have to get the, the blood for him. Then you have to go get the blood first. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he learns that to be able to get that box open, um, is that you need to fool the box into thinking the oh. big box, not the small box. You have to make it fool into thinking that it, it's a it's a dwarf or a, a dwemer who's trying to get into it. So you have to get blood from all different types of elves and mix it together, and then use that blood to get into the box because the machine will think. That it's a Dwemer or a Dwarf trying to get into it. Since, you know, the, the Dwemer are extinct at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have Dawn Guard installed, shouldn't they make you get the Snow Elf blood? Yeah, that's Falmer. Falmer. Oh, yeah, Falmer you're right. Snow Elves are, used are to be. Same. Yeah, the same the mutated version. Yeah. Abused version. The betrayed. That's right. Oh, yes. Um, so when does he give you that contraption to collect the blood? He doesn't give you that at the same time as the lexicon, right? Does he give you that when you bring the lexicon That's when you, back? Yeah, when you bring the lexicon back. And then you okay. get the, uh, what's it called? Uh, um, I can't remember the name of the tool he gives you to draw the blood. I have no idea. I, extractor? Extra, is that what it's called? Dwemer Extractor? It's, I think I have it in my inventory. That's my new metal band. <laughs> essence extractor. That's it. Essence extractor. I don't know why it's called essence. You're getting blood, but <laughs> as I was running through, as Spike said, it's always got to be blood. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is the? Is it often that you're first sent to in order to go? Yep. access black reach as you're going through there's an archway uh with two sort of ledges on either side with a an elf of one kind and an elf of another kind sitting there i always notice them i'm like fuck i wish i had that extractor now already because <laughs> you have to come back and find them and it always used to be a huge pain in my ass to go all over the damn place and find all these elves and sometimes i would have to kill people who i didn't want to just to get it in order to blood like an orc every once in a while for some reason it's harder for me to find orc or altmer altmer and orc for some reason they're i don't know and i actually was like oh man am i gonna have to go up to soul's time to find dark elf blood and stuff like that but i decided to just look it up and actually michael there's a location that has four out of the five all in one spot yeah i forget where that is but yeah it does yeah it's it is a grand location that we all are very familiar with is it Yes. We get our transmute spell there. Oh, really? That's where you can... Oh, wow. There are four out of the five elf bloods at... Uh, what is that place called? At the, the, the little... Halted mine. Stream. Halted Stream Camp or something, right? Yeah. Wow, I did not realize that. I, sure? think some of them, I think some of them might be out in the pit that are with, like, the mammoth tusk pit where people have fallen and died. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think some of them might be out there, but uh, I believe I looked up and it said that there are four out of the five there at that location. I actually didn't know that. I thought I knew which one you were talking about. I thought you were talking what about. What do you have, Colin? Do you have a better tip? Uh, it's the one that's um, uh, where the long hammer is. Uh, oh, out near, anyhow, yeah. Out where Mar- out near Markarth, and I can't remember the name. It's like a little. On like unmarked cave or is marked, I can't remember, but it's pretty fucking difficult to find. Um, and you go in; it's the one where you walk in, and all the bandits have been wiped out by farmer. And you go in, and there's I, I know there's orcs there. I think there's a wood elf, and then there's farmer. Um, you know, at 
at the halted stream camp, the only one that you don't have is the Falmer, which to me is the easiest to yeah. find because they're all over the damn map. Yeah, and if you're yeah. going to halt at stream, you can just go over to Shimmer Mist and uh, yeah. grab a Oh, yeah, there. it's right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you have, uh, was it High Elf is one of the bodies, isn't it, in the, the little pit outside? Must be. Yeah, and then you got the, the chief is the orc, and you have the, I think the woman is the wood elf. Oh, uh, yeah. I believe. Yep. Wow, I didn't even realize that. Next time, I'm just going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> Hot tip. Oh yeah, and the uh, the guy who's got the uh, the axe, you know the one the not the woodsman's friend. What's the one that does three points of animal damage? Oh yeah, oh, the, the uh, axe, mm-hmm. poacher's axe. Poachers, yeah. Isn't he a dark elf? Might be. Might be. I think he is. That's a good. I'm point. amazed at your uh, ability to remember specific individuals and bandits. At uh, nah, different, hold it straight different camp. I want to clear that about 150 times. Yeah, that's one of those places. Uh, <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm going to go over to Halted Stream. Never... Yeah. Would you care about their race enough to, to even make notice of that? That's... I, I usually just pillage bodies and move on. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of those places you're in so many times, though. It's like, it's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's. The chief is easy to recognize because it's an orc in heavy armor, and that's never yeah. going to be a good time. Yeah, no, that yeah. is tough. And especially, usually, you go in there pretty early on, and yeah, he's pretty tough. Yeah. So, other locations around the map for blood types. Uh, where have you guys gone? What did you have to do? What did what? Did, where did your characters run into your weird bloods? Oh. I did, well, in previous playthroughs, um, I just kept on playing until like it finally came up you had gotten them all Mm -hmm, i didn't really actively go out and search for them um that sometimes that takes a long time to just randomly come across all five blood types you know yeah unless you're clicking through too fast that you forget to hit the extractor you just yeah yeah that can happen (laughs) yeah michael did you uh have fun fun looking for blood well i just uh since i'm walking everywhere i kind of um just came across them as I was going from place to place. Does that happen uh, fairly quickly when you're uh, yeah, just walking everywhere? Pretty much. If you're clearing stuff as you go, yeah. Because you're you're just going to run into, you know, yeah. random different types everywhere. Bandits and stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, you're pretty much going to uh, come across them at some point. Hey, I was actually just thinking about this. Uh, I meant to ask it a while back. Have you guys played every race? I think I, I think I may have. Yeah, high elf. Yes, second playthrough. Breton first playthrough. Um, Breton for the win, by the way. Breton's mm-hmm. unappreciated. Um, let me see. Uh, Dark elf was uh, John Area. Um, I did. I haven't done a proper playthrough of a Khajiit. Probably only got up to about level 20. Oh. And I haven't done a proper playthrough of an Argonian. Got to level, level 8. Mm-hmm. And that was my most recent attempt at a new playthrough on the SSE version. Who are the Alakir? What are those? The um... Oh, a Red Guard. I have I... done an Orc and a Red Guard. I, I have not played a Red Guard. Red Guard, yeah. But you said you had not played Orc or Redguard? Or you have played uh, I have Orc, not Redguard. Let's see. I think I'm... I, I have not played Khajiit. I don't... That might be... No, I might not have even pl- ever played a Nord. You know? Now that I actually think about it. Nord and Khajiit might be the two I haven't played. Nord is good. You get some... You know, everybody sort of like, you know, doesn't mind you and sort of like, you know, still the odd insult here and there, but usually it's like You're accepted without being derided for walking into a bar. Yeah. (laughs) You get some sort of cold resistance too as a Nord, right? Yeah. Yeah. That might be nice. Um, What is that mod, Michael, that you're always complaining about swimming around up north in? Oh, (laughs) Frostfall. (laughs) Yep, uh, being just being up north is tough. I have now used uh, become ethereal. It is fantastic. Oh, great! 
Does it prevent the cold from getting you? No, but what it does do is allow me to take the shortcut in winter hold and just jump off the cliff down to the water. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> so I can go visit Septimus. Atta boy. Yeah, that's a long drop. That's oh, yeah. Long... Yeah, that's it's not long close. Drop. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long <laughs> way down. Uh, so we've gotten all of our blood then, I guess. Um, you bring it back to Septimus. Um, he kind of freaks out. And well, says, yeah, hey, don't forget, uh, Hermaeus, uh, talks to you bef- when you leave with the ex- before extractor. You, before he, oh, he talks to you before you go out to collect blood? Yes, yeah, he's in the doorway. Okay. And oddly, um, my character yeah. didn't remember him, even though, uh, him and I, uh, were, we met in, uh, Solstheim. <laughs> met yeah. He's, yeah. No, dude. We talked like 20 minutes ago. Well, he does mention Mirak. It's you who kind of doesn't remember him. It's weird. What? Weird. Yeah, it's it, it's it's a little odd the way it's written. It's like, oh, I've been watching you since Mirak. Like, uh, yeah, we, yeah, you killed him while I was standing there. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, I remember. Kill Stila. <laughs> yeah, you son of a bitch. That was my kill. <laughs> Is discerning the transmundane then added by the Dragonborn? No, DLC? no, it was there. It was there. Is Rem- it in the vanilla game? Remember, they changed the look of Hermaeus Mora is what happened. Yeah. It was a big, bright blue light or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very plain. And then they, they went with the uh, like uh, eyeballs and squid legs or something, whatever the hell it is. It's. I got the all the DLCs very early on in my playthrough, so I don't I don't know if I remember. It the... may have already been changed. Uh, well, I don't remember when they changed her Herme- the look of Hermaeus more. I, was it for Dragonborn specifically? It may have it could been. have been an update, yeah. Yeah, but I remember originally he did not look like it looks uh, now. Obviously, I did not know that. That's awesome, little tidbit of trivia there that's cool yeah i forget what ex- exactly what it looked like but it wasn't what, what it is now a mass of tentacles and grossness yeah which is still weird um and he's just a very slow talker and <laughs> his mouth smacking i know we were talking about the most annoying sounds in the game oh he, shaleen said uh nern root she doesn't like the nern root chime other people were saying the uh of thralls and stuff like that i always think the weird lispy mouth smacking of hermaeus mora is one of my least favorite sounds in the game it's just it's really creepy uh that it is he's like <laughs> it's just a strange conversation with him definitely an awful first date Oh God, yeah. Oh. Job of the Hut and Hermaeus Mora on a first date. That could be a rough sketch right here. <laughs> okay. Um so uh what does Hermaeus Mora say? You're about to go get some blood. Uh does he say Septimus is old and overused and about to die and you're yeah, now my yeah. new guy? He's gonna need a new person to take over for Septimus, essentially he says. Okay. And, you can and then he it. lets it pass, or does he does he give you anything? No, he lets Any you pass per- there. You either say yes, my lord, or whatever, or no, I'll never help you. Can you actually make a decision in that process, or do you eventually ever do you always have to be his his hero? Uh, you don't have to make a decision right there specifically because he lets you leave either way, no matter what you say, to continue nice. the quest. Um, cool. So we uh, go out, collect blood, come back, and then what happens with uh, Septimus there? Uh, he the gets pit. a little crazy. You give him the blood. He opens. It is a cube. Um, Does he attack you or something? He what? Does he attack? Does he attack you or something? No, he gets disintegrated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's he, right. Um... He turns into a pile of ash or something, right? Yeah, I think he doesn't he eject himself with the essence injector. Yes, uh, he in- injects himself, goes into the. Cube. How does the cube open? How does he actually make it? It's like um, a telescope. It goes inside like a telescope. But does he put the cube inside of a receptacle? Or no, he, he uses essence extractor. You said he injects himself with the essence extractor. Does he also need the cube? 
Yeah, he uses that somehow. I don't think they really... You can see it, but... The cube goes inside. Isn't there a little pillar inside for the cube? No, inside is the Agma Infinia. Oh, that's the... Standing on the pillar, you're right. Weird. Uh, So we get... uh, He opens up our... um, That weird Dwemer box. And... um, we see the Ogman Fenium inside. Mm-hmm. How does how does Septimus actually turn into his pile of ash? Uh, he just gets raised in the air and disintegrated. <laughs> Essentially, does Mora do that? Who who causes yeah, that to happen? He does, of course, of course he does. Or the Hermaeus. wretched abyss, whatever they call it in this part of it, but it's Hermaeus. Yeah. Wretched abyss. Yeah, that's a that's a great nickname. Those stick in high school, you know, you jerks. <laughs> He's like a giant ink spot. Ink spot and eyeballs and tentacles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a great scene in, um, what should we call it, uh, Gopher's playthrough um, of Skyrim uh, with his Richard character. And his Richard character was a nerdy um, Breton who was on the run from the Thalmor. But before he was on the run, he was a librarian. <laughs> So he was very nerdy, uh, but loved books. So he, were, as he was adventuring and he's gone through all his series, he's always collecting books and reading books. He actually done like some little shorts of him reading books. And uh, he had like built libraries and kept all his books really nice and neat. And then when he'd done that quest and then um, Septimus Cygnus comes running in and he goes, oh, it's just a book. And then uh, go for it. He just turns around and goes, what do you mean? Just a book. And then Septimus <laughs> Signets bursts into flames and then drops into a pile of ashes. And that's where he ended the episode. It was it was brilliant. <laughs> Everybody was like, oh, my God. You screaming, just a book, caused him to disintegrate. It was just a book. That yeah. is, that's the new shout. Uh, yes. Causes, causes assholes to burn. Yes. Yeah. It, was, it was a brilliant scene and... That's great. Uh, very well done by Vic, uh, by Kofi. Good job, good job, Richard. Yeah. Uh, so, what's up with the Augment Fenium, Colin? What do you know about this book? Uh, it's made of pieces of skin. I'm thinking. Yeah, it looks like a serial killer has put it together, right? Mm-hmm. Either that or Martha Stewart. Um, same difference. <laughs> um... <laughs> Ogma Infidium, uh, when you read it, it's all about knowledge. Um, doesn't Hermaeus more talk to you? Because I haven't done it in this playthrough. I'm yeah, saying. he talks to you as you're leaving yeah, about the knowledge and all that. Yeah. That's why yeah. he always, if you've played any up in Soul's Time, it's always about knowledge up in there, too. If you go into the, it's not called the Wretched Abyss, whatever, what is the Nether Worlds called? Oh, um, shoot. Uh, Apocrypha. Apocrypha. The Apocrypha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you go into the apocrypha, it's all—it's basically every all the structures are built out of pages and books, and it's all about references to knowledge. So he's all—he's all about the knowledge, and everything. So of course, his representative of a Daedric artifact is a book. The Augmentinium. Does it actually count as a Daedric artifact? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one of the yeah. That's one, one of the achievements. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Because if you get all of them, yeah, that's yeah. And um, have have you opened it? I haven't opened it up. What? Well, you, yeah, you can open. You open it when you grab it. It's kind of okay. like uh, kind of looks like an Elder Scroll essentially when you open it. Actually, the the, the yeah the print. I remember the print is really neat, right? Yeah, it's kind of got that like uh, I don't know. It's, yeah, but it does look like uh, like the Elder Scroll when you see it in your vision um, mm-hmm. with that yeah like, yeah you're right like circle and all those. Uh, all those different symbols on it and stuff. Call me a giant nerd, if you will, guys. I'm not a tattoo. I, I'm, not, I'm not a tattoo person at all. I doubt I'll ever get one, but I think that pattern is pretty sweet. If I were to do a tattoo, like those the the Elder Scroll writing, all that weird stuff. That is uh, pretty. Yeah. Cool. That would be good. You should get it. <laughs> My wife has a ton of tattoos. I, I, I've never. I've never even had the inkling to get one. Uh, next what year. you should do <laughs> is you should have them re- use that script to replace your eyebrows with. <laughs> Shave your eyebrows off and then have that tattooed as your new eyebrows. Uh, that would be amazing. 
the, just that little pet. Yeah. I think that would look jobs. Great. Here I come. <laughs> jobs. I, I think it would look fantastic. Uh, you should really consider that. Um, <laughs> I think we could raise money for uh, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Well, yes, there you go. Actually, uh, you want to challenge Andrew get a tattoo for five thousand dollars for Cystic Fibrosis? <laughs> yeah, there you go. How much did we raise last year? Was it five? Uh, five? Twenty five hundred. And then, if oh. we get five thousand, will Andrew get a tattoo? Oh, there you go. Yeah, That's... And you have to get Victor tattooed on your butt. <laughs> oh God, no, I can't do that. <laughs> My wife would be jealous. Oh. Yeah, but yeah, you know, I think Victor would be very, very flattered. Oh, I think he would be. Yeah. Oh man, he's a Don't tattoo get... man. He, he is. Appreciate it. Yeah. He would love it. I think he would enjoy it. I don't it. know if you like the, the Augment Fenia more, though. The writing from it. Yeah, I, let me open it up and see what yeah. it looks like, as a matter of fact, while we're here. Uh, I did open it up on the stand, but, you know. Yeah. Agma, it's cool. Fenium. Yeah, it has, like, the... Uh... Oh, wait, what you did... can read it. Oh. Do, Do those I want... words mean anything? Are those a reference to anything? Agma and Fenium is... Does... Do you know anything about the language of that, Colin? No. No, it doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, Victor would, he's the one with the, the classic education. He would probably be better to off talking to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would that'd be true. And you can all, and also you get to read it Path of Might, Shadow, or Magic and get uh, mm-hmm. those um, bonuses to your uh, yeah, each you of those skills. One, don't you? What's that? You get to choose one, isn't it? Yeah, you get to choose one of them. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's there's two pages. One with like a concentric circle going out with sort of like flames and different yep. spirals off in different directions, and then another triangle uh, with you know sort of cool looking gears and stuff on the interior side. That's both of those are really sweet. Yeah, I don't know. Get one on each shoulder blade. I don't know. <laughs> Where do you go? Where do you get with that calf? Do be the lame guy who gets a calf tattoo. Just don't get like barbed wire around it or anything. Oh, I gotta do the barbed wire and little hearts. <laughs> uh, no, no, those I'm are pretty. I... Those are pretty intricate. That would be. Uh, those are, those would be nice uh, on your shoulder. We'll say. Those are neat. Yeah. Those... Uh, sorry, of all the tattoo. It would be like Celtic knotwork almost. What uh? What else do we have with the uh, discerning the transmundane? What does the book do for you? Isn't there some sort of perk you get from opening it? All this wisdom? Do you get some sort of like knowledge bonus? I don't even know how that would work. What? Yes. What's up with the? That's actually what we just said. Uh, <laughs> you get the. You I, was get the up, I was looking up the other stuff. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, you get the uh, skill increases. You know, like yeah. you do with the yeah. oh, okay. uh, the bards college. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. But you only get to choose one, as he said, uh, arcane, um, might, or oh, okay, show. I see what you mean. So it's either a thief or a warrior or mage. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, okay, awesome. That's really cool. Uh, does does it just go up one level? Each, each thing goes up, yeah. So like restoration, alteration, all of them go up one level. Okay, so actually, the bards' colleges are more powerful because you can find all three. That's that's sweet. Yes. Yeah, that's the um, power of music. The power, the power of the <laughs> the power of music. Um, the path of might. I can't. Rhythm, rhythm will power. get. Yeah, I just saw it there. Cool. No, um, I, I don't know. I think that's pretty pretty good. Retrieve the book within the cube. I am uh, you loving. Do you have anything else for any of the quests that we're going to do tonight? Uh, no, I think that was it for those, but yeah, I'm loving Become yeah. a Theorem. I'm now using it constantly, so. <laughs> <laughs> the last, last 45 minutes. You're yeah, I'm just like running and jumping theory. off stuff now and <laughs> 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 and hoping it doesn't run out before I hit the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, they get I gotta hit little, it hard. Three words. You get that little raised thing in, in your chest, like, you know, your heart going in the back of your mouth every time you jump off. You're like, oh, oh I hope I make it to the yeah. bottom. <laughs> so far, I have. Uh, no, that's great. I, it, it really frees you up if you, I, I just, I can't believe I never even thought to use it before, but you know, just flash that thing on and just go hopping with no regard to where you might just land. Just go it's wherever great. you want. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. 
good stuff. Yeah. Well, the one I started using recently was slow time, but oh. I got all three words of it. Oh, but wow. what it does is that it doesn't lengthen the duration of when time is slowed. It, the more powerful the shot, uh, the more powerful the shout, the slower time actually moves. Yeah. But it still lasts the same amount of time. Uh, but it, it's a little bit weird because you it's not as if you're moving any faster and it's just everything's moving slow including you so when you're trying like you know you're holding down the power button to sort of like you know like shift to one side and then still hit the enemy so they didn't hit you but it's hard to control i thought it would be more like um like jet is in fallout 4 where time would be slowed down but you move a little bit quicker Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's it's different than that the way it, way it's used. I I used slow time a few times back, you know, my archery days, but mm-hmm. uh, I prefer um, what's the other one? I prefer like throw voice and stuff like that to mix with archery rather than slow time. Yeah, just uh, I don't know. Or slow time just didn't work well for me as well as I would have liked. Because it slows every yeah, like you said, it slows everything. So it kind of you know defeats the purpose. Yeah, and I, I'm like Victor. I I kind of forget about shouts half the time, and but when I do remember that, I like I like ice form. That seems really good because I can, especially if you're two handed. Like I'm not this character. I'm I'm not, but usually I'm a two handed character. So I'll like turn things to ice. They'll fall over, and you can just run up to them and smash them apart as an ice block. And yeah, if you like if you lot. can line it up. So if you like run backwards uh-huh. and try and get the enemies to chase after you in, line, in kind yeah. of a line, <laughs> you can get three of them at once. All, all yeah, all of them will go down, and then you can go to one, and they'll all if you have all three words. All of them will remain frozen mm. for a good chunk of time until you hit them. So you so walk you up to one, yeah. hit one, and then he'll start to defrost, but he's still lying on the floor. So you can wail on him and mm. give him a few good clumps until he's dead. Move <laughs> on to the next one, defrost yeah. that one, and then clump him to death, and then move on to the next one. Is there is there a paralyze shout? There's a no. paralyze. Um, I know there's a spell. And a potion. And an enchantment. Potion you can tip your arrows with, right? Okay. Yeah. But and there's an enchantment. an enchantment, yeah. Enchantment for your swords and stuff, but uh, there's nothing, there's no shout that'll do the same. Ice form basically makes them paralyzed. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um. So, yeah, I don't have anything else. Do, do you guys have anything uh, you'd like to get into before we sign off for the evening? No. No. I guess when this comes out, we'll be getting ready to do the uh, feedback episode. Will probably be the week after this comes out, or may have already happened. So. Great, yeah. Uh, I forgot to ask you in the last episode, Michael. Do you have any uh, show business or anything you'd like to? Uh, not, to not that I can think of. Uh, no, not offhand. <laughs> not that I can think of, actually. <laughs> there probably is something that I'm totally forgetting. So, <laughs> please a- try and uh, head over to ASA Podcasting and check out our other shows. Uh, Skyrim Addict, uh, the Fallout feed, Eowas show, my journey with cystic fibrosis, game talk, damn that television, the chatterbox. Oh yeah, we recorded a chatterbox. <laughs> that happened. And we, uh, I think Rob reviewed uh, Final Fantasy Seven. Not Final Fantasy. What the fuck is that called? That Resident Evil Seven. <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Final Rob. Fantasy is like a. Fifteen or something. yeah, I know. Yeah, I think he played that too. But he uh, did the, a review of the. I think Kathy from the group was really enjoying that. Yeah, I he was playing was it with the VR also. Oh wow! He said it was scary as hell. Yeah, you talked about it in this most recent episode of Chatterbox. Yeah, it will probably still be the most recent episode when this comes out. So <laughs> um, <laughs> it'll be the most recent one for the next three months. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> that'll be episode sixty-eight. <laughs> so. Nice. Definitely have to check that out. Yeah. So he went. Yeah. He he has the VR for the PlayStation. God, that's so cool, man. Are you guys interested in that, Colin? Would I, I think I could wear it? I mean, uh, VR? No, not really. No. 
Yeah, no. you don't want to step into the world. Connor's been bugging about it, but I don't. I don't think I could do it. Michael? Until they can, until they can get, you know, the uh, the jack to go into the the hole behind your ears directly into your brain, and you can yeah. get all the senses all in one, like it's actually being fed into your brain. I'd be up for that, but putting the face mask on, nah, I'm alright. Okay. Michael, yeah. and also no interest. Uh, I like I can play in first person now, but I don't know VR. I don't think it would work for me. I think it would be like, well, nausea inducing. Come on, it's the really a way to submerge you all the way fully into a game. I my only problem is I'd want to be in VR, but third person. I just want to be like standing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy. Hey, buddy, go over there. Problem. Hey, you. Hey, you. Over here. There might be an issue with that. I'm just, you know, possibly, <laughs> possibly defeating the purpose entirely. Yeah, VR. everybody who's ever worked on VR <laughs> just listened to that and just went, yeah, they just broke <laughs> their phones. <laughs> they, yeah, yeah. Oh god, <laughs> what have I done with my life? <laughs> but seriously, that's. I think that'd be fun. I don't know. I don't also. I don't want to have to run in place to play a video game. That doesn't sound fun to me. Well, they still have uh, controllers and all. I think Good. right. But I've seen. I don't know what the demonstration is, but I've seen one where they're on like a little platform that fucking rotates and runs. And I'm just like, no, oh, God, I don't want that. No. Yeah, I'm sitting on my fucking couch. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah. Um. Cool. Uh, guys, got anything else for the show tonight? Uh. No. Oh, I almost died by a revered dragon. There is that. Oh, no, don't do that. Uh, Colin, thank you for your in- Infomatica sign off there. Yeah, I totally forgot about it. Yeah, check out the other shows, guys. <laughs> yeah. At least all, someone's watching them for us, right? <laughs> Especially Pat's uh, playthrough. Uh, so that That's a good time there, that New Vegas playthrough. Oh, yeah, you guys enjoying that? I saw that Colin popped on a new uh, New Vegas character. Just A lot of people have been doing that. They felt inspired by Pat's New Vegas playthrough. I've seen a, a bunch of people do that. So that, that's great. I need to actually get into that game. It's a good. It's fun. Definitely. Is. I need to play three. I want to play Fallout 1 and 2 at some point, but I don't know how I have to do that. I have to get, like, a PC to do that, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know how yeah. Else. Yeah, they were PC only, right? Probably can't play them on Mac, right? Um, probably not. Yeah, well, I'll figure something out. Uh, so for Colin, thank you, Colin, for joining us this evening, and Michael again, sir. Always a pleasure to podcast. I am Andrew, and I'd like to thank everyone for listening to this episode of a Skyrim Addict podcast. Uh, next week or next time we meet, uh will be saturday march 4th wow a whole month from now we will be playing alduin's bane also the quests the fallen season unending and parthernex so we will see you guys next time and uh if you're interested in doing play along or anything like that you have feedback to get into us uh you can send that into skyrim roundtable at gmail.com thanks everybody for listening and we'll see you next time See you later, guys. See ya. Who is rapping? Over keen. Dragons are not over keen. I'll dice them like a knife, slicing right through an Thank you for downloading this episode of a Skyrimatic Podcast Roundtable. If you are interested in doing a play long character with us, the show can be contacted by emailing skyrimroundtable at gmail.com. For the Skyrim Random Stats Character Generator, the Roundtable Schedule, our Amazon link, and all other show information, please head on over to asapodcasting.com, where you will find the Fallout feed, My Journey with CF, a Skyrimatic podcast, the Chatterbox, ASA Game Talk, our YouTube channel, as well as other content. Your five-star review on iTunes is greatly appreciated once again. Thank you for downloading and no lollygagging.